guys it's good to see you again have you been away from making jewelry for a while maybe you feel a little bit out of the loop I do because I run this supply company and I have to come up with new ideas and take care of this and that and I do a lot of writing sometimes I don't get to have the creative time that I'd like and I gotta do something to fix that and so do you we both do so where do you start well for me, a little tip for me is when you feel like you're a little bit out of the loop and you need to get going again, sometimes the best thing is just to take a little pile of tiny components or smaller components and just start making earrings. And one of the reasons why that works so well is because you can make progress quickly and you can get some things made quickly and before you know it, you have a pile of earrings. They may not be the most imaginative earrings you've ever made. They may not be the most fancy, but you have stuff done. And it gets you it gets you in gear again, it gets you rolling again, it gets you going toward more productivity and more new ideas. So, without me going on much more about it, I'll show you some of the things that I was doing this morning and maybe it'll give you some new ideas and get you going and me going too. Okay guys, so I've got a few little cute components from our new Be Soup by 1928 line that I'm just hooking together, just having a good time with and seeing how I can change them up a little bit. I've got our little button connector here and I've got the little dangling rows at the bottom. These are not expensive components and as you can see, you could just get that and put it together and put it on a hanging wire and you're done. But I'm thinking, hmm. Could we do a little bit more to that? I don't know. So I'm thinking, even though I've got my ear wires on already, I might take and just distress this a little bit and get some highlights in it. Just to show you some stuff you could do to kind of make it your own. See, that's kind of more polished now, don't you think? Looks more, I don't know, finished or something. wonder what it would look like if I go over the little flower a little bit. Now it kind of wants to catch. I can get the middle of it. The high part in the middle. Yeah, there you go. This is the rusted iron finish and I love it because it's interactive if you remember um, working with our rusty brown, rusty black was finish. It was a very highly interactive finish as well but this one rusted iron has more copper in it and so we feel that it's a little richer so when we went with this line we we went with that we also have rusted iron brass now too but getting back to what I'm doing I found this product I think I talked to you about in one of my more recent videos it's called Metalik Wax it's by Art Alchemy this has something to do with Finnabear if you guys like the mixed media stuff you probably know all about Finnabear it's pretty awesome stuff um, I have some of this on the website, as a matter of fact. I love it. And I'll be getting some more, too. But this is the white gold. And it has a kind of unique kind of a... I like to call that kind of a German silver color. So I'm going to just... Probably I shouldn't put it on my finger, but... I don't think it's going to hurt me because I'm going to get it off quick. I'm going to just take this and see... Let's see what happens. We're doing this together. This is an experiment. I'm just going to go ooh, over the highlights a little bit. So I got a little bit of shine into there. Oh, that's glowing. And so you still have that rusted black background. Now this could be a problem. You might have to get a little brush and dry brush it into the, to the rose. But I mean, I did get the high points. Now let's see the difference. That is awesome. It was pretty before, but accented with this, it's even prettier. And you need so little, and this will come right off. I'll show you in a minute. So I'm just kind of going over this, trying to do it the same way I did on the other one, because with earrings, of course, you know, we need to get them to match. So we're just kind of doing a little bit of rainy day work here. Maybe there's been a little 
rain outside, a little bit of rain in our life, who knows, but we got to get our groove back. You can't let your groove go. That's why last week I did that, or the other week, whenever it was the last time I did video, I did that Spanish video. I was trying to get my groove back. I always wanted to do that to see if I could. So always take challenges and prove to yourself you can do something. It makes you feel better. It makes you feel like you can go on and really get busy again. So those are done. Those look pretty awesome, don't you think? And it took so little, so little to do those. So I'm going to just stick them. I don't know if they're still showing in the frame or not. Hobby, not showing. So I'll pull this back a little bit. I want you to be able to see that, you know, what we got accomplished in the video. Okay, now they're showing. Okay. All right, I got one more little idea that I like. Um, let me take this off of here because I want to show you how this goes on too. This again is the rusted iron. And I do like to distress it before, these are fussy how they go on and off. I'm going to show you in a minute too. Just got to get it off first. There we go. All right. Um, I really like to distress it. Of course, it's making some little fibers on my towel, but it doesn't matter. Paper towel, I'm going to throw it out. With, it just kind of gives it a little bit of a glow when you do that. This would be the same with really any kind of brass, pewter, whatever. You know, if it's got like a dark color on it, you can take the quadruple aught zero 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 four zeros steel wool, and you can raise highlights in so so many things, and just really get that piece and get it to glow and make it your own. So I've got these two beautiful dangles that were used um, oh my goodness in uh, 1928 jewelry for many years and now of course we have them in our line. So what am I going to put in the middle there? Well it raises a dilemma because sometimes these little mounts are an odd size. So you could do like what I did here with this little mount, this little bezel mount, I, I put ice enamel in there and then I put magic gloss and made kind of like my own insert or whatever. You can paint them inside and top them with resin too and make, you know, finish them off that way. And that way you don't have to really worry about having a stone that fits perfectly. You can do other things. This is what I do. But I found another little trick too. Let's say that you did want to put a cameo on these. As you can see, this is the cameo that should fit in here, but it does not. So what would I do? Well, I don't want to. I want to do it completely here because I have another idea I want to do with these. But I'm just going to show you quickly. It's kind of fiddly, but you would take one of these cameos. That looks pretty, doesn't it? You would take this, and you would take a little bit of six thousand. And you would put it out very finely on the tip of a toothpick, like this. I like these long ones if you can find them. And then just apply it so delicately. And then also some right here. This might even be more important than putting it on a stone. Right here, right on the top lip. Because a lot of people have said the cameos don't always fit. And they don't. You know, some of the vintage ones, they're just off size. Some of the natural stones are just off size. It happens. So what do you do? Well, just glue it on the top here, rim, and then with a little bit of glue on this, and then set it. And it'll stay, and it'll be just fine. It'll look good. Just got to get them in there straight. I'm not sure if I have them in straight. But there's a little solve to a dilemma some have with setting cameos in the pewter findings because they don't give very much. Neither does brass, really. But if you get a mount that doesn't fit, a lot of times you can go along the top rim and it'll work fine. Okay, so I'll just put those aside. What I want to do with this is I take that little dangle again that I had on this piece and as you see it has a little top. I cut it off. Pewter is soft. It's easy to cut. I'm going to cut it away from us because Javi's right on the other side. Say hi Javi. Hello. Hello. And I don't want to fly over there into her equipment or into her eye, worse yet. 
Now, you could file this if you wanted a little bit, but the way we're going to set this in here, it's hardly going to matter. So that's up to you. You do want to get it clean, and I can see that's not quite clean. You want to get that component just really flush off of there. My hands shake naturally. People have said to me, how could you ever make jewelry your hands shake so bad? Well, you know what I manage? A lot of people manage. I have a, a friend, Cindy Peterson, maybe some of you know her. She is so blind, she can only see out of a little hole in her eye, like this much vision, the top of this thing, maybe. Maybe it's a little bit bigger. I don't know, Cindy, you'll have to correct me. But she has very little vision that she can see out of her eyes. And she makes absolutely gorgeous stuff. So, hands shaking, can't see, whatever. If you want to make jewelry, you can. She's living proof you can make some pretty awesome jewelry with limited sight. In fact, we have another customer here who is completely blind. And she makes, I don't know, I think maybe it's rosaries or keychains or something. She does it completely by feel. She does fine. She loves doing it. Anyway, so what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to set these in here. Isn't that a pretty look? I think that just, I, I like that better than the stone. And the way I'm going to set it, you're just not going to see that little bottom part where I took it off in the pewter shine. But if you want, go get yourself a black Sharpie marker and just and just cover that right up. And it's done. It's a lot of things with the rusted iron. If you have a little, you know, a little nip that you have to take off of it or you get a little scratch or something, a little ding. If you're careful, you can take a little Sharpie marker, go over it and as good as new. Not a problem. That's what it is about making this kind of jewelry, you know? We, we look for ways to fix things. We work outside the box. That's it. That's what I want to say. We work outside of the box. And that's good because that's where you come up with all kinds of new ideas. Okay. So I don't want to get too much on there. Once again, glue technique. Got to get enough because we don't want to knock that off. But we don't want too much so it's oozing out everywhere. Let's get it positioned just right. Okay, so then from there I would put my ear wires on. I think I won't put them on this pair right now because I don't want to bump my roses. Let me just take a look at these. Okay, I don't want to see if I got them in there the way I like. Yeah, it's a little high on this side. You know, everybody's got their way that they like to set stuff the way they want it to, to look. I think, in fact, I'm going to turn it this way. I think it looks better that way. Okay, so I turned them a little bit kitty corner, but I think that's a nice look. So now I've got two pairs of earrings. All I'll have to do is put the ear wires on. All right, going on from that, what can I do? Well, I have these beautiful bows that are the rusted iron. And then I have these cute little rusted iron um, bezels that are hearts. And I needed something to put in. Now, what some people do is they'll put some glue in that bezel and they'll fill it all up with little pearls. Oh, it's a beautiful look. I'll have to show you that someday. But it's not rocket science. Basically, just put your glue in there, put your little pearls in. And oh, to tell you something uh, about picking up pearls and stuff, I got this tool. Pick me up. There are some videos about using the pick me up tool on YouTube. In fact, that's how I found out about this tool. And I was able to procure some. And it, I love it. Here, I've been working with stupid tweezers for years. It's so tedious. And this, this does work. If you have this full of glue, you're going to pick up little pearls with the tip of this. Put some little glurpy stuff on the tacky stuff on the end of that. Can you see it? And then uh, it picks it up. And voila. And then when you get too much hanging off the end of it, just whack it off. So that's another video, which we're going to do because I've got Sarah and I, Sarah Loon. And I want to talk to you about that in another one. But pick me up tool. We have them at the site and they're not expensive at all. Okay, getting back to the bow and the heart. I digress. So how am I going to put this together? Well, it seems obvious, doesn't it? I could distress that. Something else I found out this morning. Um, I could take perfect pearls with the embossing ink. Apply embossing ink little bit of perfect pearls over top. I used um, the violet, interference violet. And 
it was great over top of this. It just, oh my goodness. You wouldn't think, why would you put like a violet color, purple lavender over that? It was beautiful. But they have um, resin on them right now and they're drying so I can't show them to you. But you want to let that dry first before you put any resin on it. That's one of the reasons why they're taking time to, to dry is because I didn't wait long enough. But that's an idea and I'll show you more about that in a minute. Let's do these. Well, here was my idea. I thought I would just hook them together and then I have these little itty bitty kind of bronzy pearls. Not pearls, beads. I would just put on there. So let's do that. Why not? It's our rainy day deal, right? So I've got my jumpy tool. You guys know how those work. Put that in there. Can't live without these guys. You have to get one. I don't care where you get it from. If you get it from me or you get it from somebody else, get one. I have them all over this place. Now this is an 18 gauge jump and it's a little tight but I got it on. Okay, so we got it on. Now I'm going to take my little doohickey thing. You know, this is another thing you can do whenever you're having kind of a bad day and don't know what to do next is uh, just get a bunch of little beads and wire them up and get them ready for projects. So now I'm going to use two pliers to close this one. Click, it's done because this was a little bit tight to get that on there. Okay. That's cute. I like those. Kind of makes me think like maybe I want a little doohickey stone of some kind right now. I don't know. Might be too much. Yeah, kind of. Leave it alone. I tend to overdo everything. I'm trying to think simpler. Those are pretty. So now I'm going to put them on ear wires. Now here's the deal with these ear wires. It doesn't maybe seem apparent how to put these on. They, they're they seem a little bit odd. But this type, I always think of it kind of like a roller coaster. I put it on this way, and up he goes over the roller coaster, huh? <laughs> For lack of something better. You can get it turned around. There it goes, it's hanging. Now, you mustn't leave it just like that, because it, it could really slip off. So what I do is, once I get it to that part, is I take, and I just tighten. And we do carry these ear wires on the site. They're very economical to use. I like them very much. Okay, it's closed enough. So there you go. I'm going to put him here. Her, whatever. The little thing went sideways, but you can see what I did. Okay, I'll put another one on just for review. So up it goes. Front side first. Up over the hump. Over the roller coaster. If you want to call it that. And here it is. It's on. Do not leave it like that open. It's supposed to be closed. So we close it. Sometimes we just need a gentle day of instruction where we don't feel challenged. Where it's something anyone can do and have success. Can you see these here? I don't know if I'm um, hanging. We can really see them. She's trying. I wish I could. I had one of those mannequins that had ear holes, and then we, then we had to have a new camera angle. So I don't know. We can't win with this camera. I was thinking the other day of a of a project I want to teach you using the torch. And I'm like, how am I supposed to do that in front like this? I won't have my safety. I'll figure that out another day. Okay, I digress as usual. ADHD, that's what it does. No apologies. Okay, so now you might see the, I don't know if you saw the earrings I had on at the beginning. Let me take them out. Kind of pretty. They look kind of like uh, old steel or something. I don't know. They're not black. They're not silver. They're kind of gray black, I guess. So how did I do that? Well, it's very, very simple. And I'm going to show you. This item we have on the website, the number for this one is PRAW0514. Javi can put that under there for you. I'll see if I, maybe I can get you the names of the other parts too. Because I did not bring them down here. What do I have? Oh, the heart bezel here. This heart bezel. This is um, for the raw one, PAR 
AW03044 for the heart bezel. But that wouldn't be in this color. Anyway, go to Bisubli 1928 www.bisuboutiques.com and you'll find them all. They're not hard to find. Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right. So, it comes from this piece. This is, believe it or not, raw pewter, nothing on top of it. Plain. Nothing going on. And you might say, well, that's beautiful. Why would I want to... Why would I want to take and do anything to it? Well, look how nice it matches these earworms, too. Maybe you don't. That'd make nice bridal earrings, don't you think? Beautiful bridal earrings. Or you could take this piece and you could turn it around this way. And if you had big enough jumps, you could hang through here and through here and make a necklace. And then hang something there. Or if you like to make the lotus flower, uh, hand flower bracelets, some people call them slave bracelets, some people object to that name, so hand flower, lotus flower bracelet, where you take and you, is this showing? You take and you put it, you know, like on your hand, and then you take a chain down and go around your finger, or with a ring finding. You would take and hang out here, and out here, and then this would be your metal piece. So, there's a lot of ideas there that you can use. But anyway, maybe you don't want to use them all twinkling and shiny. How do you get them to look like that? Well, it's called black acrylic paint. And it's very, very simple. And I'm going to show you how. In case you've never done this before. A lot of times people think, oh, I'm limited to uh, the color that's on the metal. What am I going to do? Well, you know... I love my colorization. We have so many colorization videos at Visa Boutiques on the YouTube channel. We have so many of them. Okay, this is a little bit tacky, but you know what? Because it's a little older. That's kind of good in this case. This is going to make a mess. So let me set these out here so you can have a look at them while I'm making a mess. All right, so I'm just going to go over it. I'm just going to work right straight out of the bottle because I got black paint on my brush already anyhow, so it won't contaminate anything. So I'm going to make it pretty black, but I'm going to do one at a time. Yeah, I'm going to get it on my fingers too, so I'm not going to look too nice. My nails aren't done anyway, so what do we care, right? And you know, you, you can use any color of paint, really. I mean, it might be pretty with some colors of blue red might be pretty, certain greens, you decide. Okay, so I've got that coated pretty well. Now, what I have to remember is that since I'm changing up the whole color of the piece, i got to do the back too. So, we don't have to be real fussy about it. We just kind of get the paint off of our brush and get in there. I got a little bit more, so now it's blobby. No problem. This is the easy part of painting. You can be messy. Okay. There we go. Now, we're not done. I'm going to go ahead. I know this is wet. Doesn't matter. I'm going to do this wet. That's how I did these. I'm going to take the top off. If I get some on me, eh, so what? Now, Peter's kind of soft, so don't push down on it too much. It won't break, but it could get bent out of shape a little bit for you. So you can see how the pewter, shiny pewter color is coming up through the back of that. Okay, now we're going to get the back. I'm going to distress that a little bit, too. What do you do to seal this? Well, first, you make sure that it's really good and dry. One thing I've done that I wish I could show you how right now, but it's kind of different. I don't know if any, if any of you have tried this. I took Magic Gloss and on some of the, well, actually on this one. See, I did that one in lavender. Um, I took Magic Gloss on a toothpick and put it all around the edges and just rubbed it around on there, and then I took a little rag and rubbed it right off. So, there was still resin on it, but not very much. 
and then I put it into the UV light that you get with Magic Gloss and it cured it and it's sealed. Away we go. And then did on the back too. So anyway, that's how that goes. Just like that. This one's a little bit lighter. So, you know, I could probably get that lighter if I kept working on it. But I don't think I will. I'll do the next one. Let's just finish. It's always good to finish, right? Yeah. This is our rainy day earrings. Using the Bisu by, two, by 1928. computer components on our website. I hope you'll come visit us on our website. You know, right now, through the end of August, I'm leaving this deal up through the end of August, I really want people to try these components and explore using them. Um, in fact, in the latest Jewelry Affair magazine, if you take that magazine, um, Michelle Mock did a real nice um, project using Bisu by 1928, and they published it. Just a little heart on a bracelet. It was really sweet. Don't have to get elaborate. But anyway, the little deal that I have is that you can come into my website and you can put code BSU1928. It's all caps. B S U E 1928. No spaces. All caps on the letters. No spaces. 1928. Javi, you'll put that into the video for us. And if you do that, any and all 1928, uh, Bisu by 1928 pieces that you purchase through the end of August 2017 will be 25% off. That's a chunk, guys. But I really want you to try them. And so there's no minimum purchase on that. You know, just, you could come in and buy just a few things and get 25% off. And our shipping is very reasonable. People say that all the time. We do not gouge on shipping. In fact, we usually absorb a little bit of it. Okay, what we want to do is we want to make sure they match. Making earrings got to always match. What do you think, hubby? Does it look pretty close? Yeah. Looks pretty good. Now I got to do the back. So I'll seal it either by using that resin trick or I could use um, clear, clear lacquer spray. But on the pewter, I'm finding that when you do that, you need to be very careful not to get real close and spray it real thick. Because for some reason on the pewter, especially if it has paint under it, it wants to kind of stay tacky. So you got to do light misting coats, maybe two or three light misting coats and leave time in between so that, you know, it cures. So you could do that. Or another thing I always like to use is the Swelligant Clear Sealant. We have that at the site. I love that stuff. I use a lot of it. And it's, it's matte. You put it on, you'll never see that you put anything on it, but then it will be sealed. Anything that you paint, whether it's brass or it's pewter, whatever kind of metal, whatever, you have to seal it because it could chip off and get ugly or water could get on it, it might come off on somebody. You do not want that, so that's how that goes. Okay. To achieve this look, I don't know if I really have time to show you. What the hey, let's do it. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna get another towel so you can see what's going on. We don't have to deal with uh, all those little fibers. Whoops. You guys can't see it, but there's an awful mess on this table. Both sides of it. We just film in the middle. And it isn't even because I've been so creative down here doing stuff. It's just, it's, it's a mess. It's stuff's dumped, you know. I get stuff and I say, oh, I'm going to keep that part. And it's dumped down here. And it wouldn't be hard to clean it up. I could have it cleaned up in half an hour. But anyway, that's a fun thing to do on a rainy day, too. Clean up your mess. And then leave yourself a pile to work out of and make earrings. Okay, getting back to it. How do I do this? Okay, with these, I started out... Let me get a couple more of these. I'm going to have to tell, tell Shelly to reduce these. Okay, I started out with these. And I think I might 
have put a little bit of white spray paint down first on them. But I'm just going to go for it without doing that. It'll be okay. The spray paint takes it longer to cure, so you do have to leave a little bit longer. I noticed that. With the brass, if you use spray paint on it, it cures real fast. With this, not so much. It takes longer. Okay, I got Stampendous Clear Embossing Ink. I like it because it's in a little squeezy thing and you got more control. And I'm just going to coat this. You'll, you'll know that you've got it on there because it'll be a little bit sticky and it'll come off on your fingers and go through the back and all that, so you'll know. You have to do this in order to get the perfect pearls to stick. I don't have success using Pearlex doing this. you got to use perfect pearls because the way I understand it is perfect pearls has a little bit of a resin binder in it, and so it will help you to get it to stick. The Corlex just wants to go floating off. So okay, I've got that on there. Okay, I'm just, you know what, I'm not going to do that. That's bad practice. Don't work out of the jar. This is Perfect Pearls Interference Violet. I don't think we have this color on our site, but we do have some other lovely colors. There's a turquoise color on a cappuccino. Everybody loves that color. We have a lot of that in stock. Okay, so I got a little bit too much. So I'm going to get some on my brush. I like a nice soft brush. You don't have to have an expensive fancy artist brush for this. Okay, so now I'm going to start dusting it on. And you will see I'm getting a very lovely, delicate lavender hue, violet, whatever you want to call it, to this. And you could do the backs or not in this case. That's up to you. But you do want to get it good and coated so there's you know, a good amount of color on there. Of course, that doesn't match that. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But anyway, you know what? I don't think I put it on here. Did I put it on here? I don't remember. I don't think I did. That's not going to help if I don't have it on. You know what? It never hurts. You can go back over and put some more if you forget. Okay. So I'm going to work out of my cap again. And then I'm going to get this nice and coated. Okay, you can put it down. You can keep going. A lot of this is just playing with it. That's why I love colorization because you can just, just play with it. Okay, so now I'm not going to be able to complete complete this for lack of time, but I'm going to tell you how I got it to look like that. If you want to change it, if you don't want to change it, you want to leave it like this. Let it cure. Give it several hours at least. Overnight's better. And you can do Swelligant Clear Coat on it, or you can do the light misting coats of uh, Krylon Matte Lacquer if you want. You could do the resin thing too, but it will change the appearance a little bit. It will darken it a little bit. So if you want to kind of keep the color like that, I'd go with the Swelligant Clear Coat. It's, it's so easy and economical to use. Okay, how I got this like this. I let it cure, and then I didn't seal it. And then I took my steel wool and I distressed it. So I brought some of this silver back up. And then I put black over the top of it. Just a light coat. And then I took paper towel and distressed it. And got it back off so that you could hardly see any. But it brought the detail up. So that's how I did that. So be, there you go. you got options. You can go this way. You can go this way. Or you can go this way. And once again, you don't have to make earrings out of this. These are these are pretty, um, what's the word, flexible with what you can do with them. You know, you can make that the necklace centerpiece. You can do the hand flower with it. There might be even some cool way to make a bracelet going sideways with that. I have to experiment. But anyway, that's what I was doing today, guys. I don't know what you're doing in your workshop. That's what I'm doing. So I've got to remember that I have to seal this and this. I might work on this a little bit more yet. I have to seal these. These are sealed, so I just have to put ear wires on them. These are done. I was wearing them. This has to dry. These are ready to go. So look at all that we did in just a few minutes together. So, head on off to your workspace and see what you can make. 
And again, if you'd like to try these wonderful Bisu Wing 1928 products, they're lead-free pewter made in the United States by the 1928 Jewelry Company, which we all know and love. Come on over to BisuBoutiques.com because it's the only place you can buy them. We are the only ones so far that have that line. So far. So come on over and get them, and don't forget your coupon, BISU1928, so that you can get 25% discount off of your BISU by 1928 products. It's just the BISU by 1928 products. You get 25% off, and you can even buy just one piece. Enter that code, and you'll get it. Through the end of August, there's no minimum to get that discount. Normally, there's $75 minimum. Right now, it's waived, so please come over and get yourself some and try it. You're going to fall in love. I'm done talking. <laughs> I'm off to finish. And Javi's going to render this and get her numbers on there for you. And we're going to see you next time. So you have a wonderful time. All right. Bye-bye.